All right, happy to be joined on the Fox 43 Sunday Sports Frenzy by John Jackson, Senior Director of External Affairs for Duke Basketball. John, did I get that right? I know you have a very long title, so I kind of shortened that one down a little bit. It, it's it's close enough. It's uh, Duke Deputy AD for Men's Basketball and External Affairs, but yeah, you were real close. There we go. I shortened it down because I'm a kid from the Cole region, so shorter always works better. Now, you're down there in Durham on Tobacco Road at Duke University, but you have roots right here in Lancaster County, being a native of Lebanon. How yeah, uh, yeah, grew up, uh, yeah, grew up in, in, in Lebanon and uh, actually started in Anvil. And then uh, grew, you know, grew up most of my time when I was in Lebanon and, and then uh, did high school. My high school years were up in Bradford County, uh, way up in the northeast uh, part of the state. But, uh, you know, still consider Lebanon my hometown. Awesome. It, it is a great place of Cedars. Good basketball programs this year on both boys and girls side and last year's LL Champs. I'm sure you know all about that because your brother Del Jackson runs LLHoops.com, does a great job covering the high school local scene. So I guess it kind of runs in the family. That you guys are just basketball centric. Yeah, I, you know, Dell, uh, you know, Dell obviously played at Anvil and, and uh, coached a long time in that region and uh, obviously has a huge passion for, for the league. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the website is kind of a labor of love for him. He, he does a lot of work with it. I don't know for, I, I try sometimes to talk to him about, is it really, is the, is the ROI really worth it? You know, uh, but but he loves it and, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, great for, for that, for that area. Uh, but yeah, we, we grew up big sports fans and, um, you know, went to Penn state and, and realized that maybe there could be a career there in it. And, uh, just been really fortunate that, that I was able to fall into something that doesn't feel like a job for the last 30 plus years. You mentioned that ROI talk, talking to Dell, and I always love seeing them out at games. You know your way around that, that kind of stuff and branding and communication. You mentioned that by Penn State. So you worked in Penn State Sports Information Department. You worked for the United States Olympic Committee. You've been down at SMU and at Duke for the last 20, 20 plus years. Just briefly, can you, can you come up with some top five moments from all the, from, in that long journey to where you're at now? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I'll, I'll take. I'm gonna give my my personal one first. Uh, I was a freshman at Penn State in 1986, so uh, that was a pretty special year for for the football program, and certainly uh, we we had a lot of fun, uh, you know, celebrating in in January after that after the win over Miami. So that that's that's a personal one. Um, I, you know, professionally, I, I think it's a couple things, um, you know, I've been really fortunate since I've been at Duke to be part of three national championship, uh, teams here. And, um, each one is very special. Um, the O one one team was my second year at Duke. So I was still trying to figure things out. And, um, you know, fortunately we had, we had some players named Battier, Williams, Boozer, Dunleavy, Duhon, uh, pretty, pretty good group. And uh, also a great group of guys. And so that for me was at the time, you know, like you get into this to, to try to be part of something like that. And, and that was that was a really cool, cool thing to, to go through. I think as I got older, <clears throat> as the as the next couple came along, uh, you know, the, the coolest thing for me is my family has been able to be part of these championship runs. And you know, a son and a daughter that, that, you know, to see it through their eyes was super special for me. Cause again, we're, we're busy, you know, we're, we're working, we have to, we have to take care of our, our coaches, players and staff. So um, you don't get a chance to really enjoy it until maybe you can breathe at the end of it all. But to see it through their eyes was, was a really, really cool you know, both of those 2010 and 15. And you mentioned Dell, my brother was out there for, uh, he was out there for the 2010 championship. And, and I think he's there for 15 as well. But like, uh, just, you know, to be able to share it with family that's been with you along the way, it, it, that's the coolest part. Does that kind of make the rat race of the, the basketball season? And no matter what level of basketball it is, whether you're a high school coach, whether it's, whether it's running a, a, a high school website dedicated to basketball or whether being in charge of communications for the biggest basketball program in the, in the country, does that just kind of make that rat race all worth it, seeing it come together with a championship and having your family there? 
It, it, yeah, definitely. And again, you have to sometimes separate the professional and the personal, but uh, um, the one thing that I think coach has done such a great job here. I mean, we are, we are family. I know it's very cliche to say that, but you know, we spend a lot of time together and the, the great thing coach has done is he's kind of been an example for all of us, how to incorporate your family into the, into the work. And cause he knows you're going to be gone a lot. You know, it, we, we all get that. And so the more we can, we can have them part of it. You know, maybe we're not missing out on some of the things that we would if we just were 100% dialed into our jobs. And that's uh, that's been a great role model for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes you you get reminders, right? Uh, we you get people to come to to Cameron for the first time, and and they're in they're just in awe. And you know, for you, for me, I'm around it all the time. It's it's a you know what I mean. It's it's a it's a great reminder of you know what we do have here is really special and to kind of see it through others eyes can can it can, it can help when when things are hard you can, you can think of you know wow but remember how much it meant to this kid that you you helped or you know uh, first time you brought a friend here or, or a relative and um it it does make it it, it helps you get through what, what it's a grind i mean you know a, tip, a good year for us we're playing 40 plus games it's a lot you know, it's a, it's a lot and a lot of travel and, and things like that. So that those things definitely help, you know, make it all, make it, make you get through it and make it worth it. Well, since you were in college, you were around big time athletes, you know, working in Penn State's SID. So you were around coach Paterno and, and things like that. Still, when you walk into Duke in, in uh, 2000, you know, it's one thing to hit the ground running, but still be in awe of it. Can you describe what that was like, your first entrance in there and kind of compare and contrast now that, you know, the hair may be a little bit more grayer or, 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 or something like that, that you're so used to seeing coach over the last 20 plus years? Yeah, the, it's funny that uh, when I did my interview at Duke, I never interviewed with Coach K, even though I was going to work with them. They were going to Michigan for a game. So it was a you know, a little, little odd to get a job offer without ever really talking to the coach I was going to be working with. Um, so first time I met him, we got here in the middle of January and it, we had an ice storm and it was everything in our area shuts down. We don't have, you know, we don't have the capability to deal with, uh, with uh, snow and, and ice here. So we just, we just basically wait for it to melt. Uh, so the first time I saw him, you know, this, this guy walks in my office and there's like a, a hat pulled way down over his eyes. And it was a Cubs hat. And it was, you know, Coach K welcoming me to the to the job. I'm like, oh, okay, this is this is different, you know, than what I thought it was going to be. Um, and I remember walking into the locker room the first time to get introduced to our players. And um, again, Battier, Williams, Dunleavy, Carowell, you know, those those are the folks. You know, these are guys you see on TV all the time, and it it, it was a little intimidating. Um, and I can say that that both Chris Carowell, who's now on our staff as, as an associate head coach and and uh, does a great job for us. And, and Shane Battier were the two guys that basically told told those guys, hey, I know he's new. Listen to him, though. And it really it, it really kind of broke the ice and, and helped me get get in with that group. Um, and then again, the next year, kind of going through that championship run with a lot of the same people uh, was was huge. But there, there was there's an awe factor uh the first time you know when, until you start getting used to, used to people and and whatnot and, and coach is such a I mean such a big larger than life figure in sports that you just you, you just got to get over it and that he's he's just a guy like us he's very very good at what he does and in my opinion I'm, I'm biased but I think he's probably the best that's ever done what he does in, in our world um so you have to you just have to figure out a way to, to look at him as another person. And, um, and over the years, uh, you know, I've had 21 years with them at this point. So um, I don't think, I don't think about it anymore. I just, I just know here's what we have to get done as a program. Here's what our coach wants done. How do I help them execute it? So it, it you know, I come in, it's a job. And fortunately I'm working with people with uh, great morals, great ethics. Uh, so we, you know, we can all do what we have to do and sleep great at night. It's going to be an emotional end of this season, you know, kind of it's a roller coaster of emotions up and downs this year with, with, with highs, with big wins and, and things like that. Uh, this weekend's going to be emotional for the entire Duke program. Last home game at Cameron. Being in the role that you are, do you find yourself being more hands on in a week like this? Or do you find yourself maybe taking a step back and telling people 
take a step back and kind of soak in what this moment and this game is go- is going to be like for Coach K at Cameron. Yeah, we're. I'd say this week. I mean, we're all hands on deck. We've all got our own responsibilities for the game and and whatnot. Um, you know, big a big part of mine is is just making sure that some of the ESPN asks, and there are a lot of them, uh, are are doable and uh, what we're willing to what we're willing to do. I think one thing that's been great about Duke over the years that that I've enjoyed, um, you know, we'll pull the curtain partway back but never the whole way back. And I think there's an aura about our program and certainly around coach that I think that's helped build our brand over the years. And uh, so we've got to be careful to just not go nuts and do everything, uh, but uh, be very strategic about what we're going to, to want to allow and show to the public and, and what we're not. And not that there's anything crazy going on, but just there's, that's part of our brand, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's uh, it's important to us. So um yeah, there'll be a lot of hands on. I, I hope on Saturday at 620 when when we tip, uh, we're able to enjoy a basketball game and, and then um, hopefully do what we want to do and, and win. And we can enjoy it after. And, and as coach says, his goodbye to, to Cameron, which will be I'm sure I'm sure a lot of us are going to be very emotional at that point. I'm sure we will. What's coach like after a big game? Is he fiery? Is he subdued? Um, yeah, what do you say? He's usually, so, you know, first of all, the, the great, one of the great things coach does like every game is big because we're in it. So we, we prepare for, you know, a Tuesday night in November, the same as we would for a final four game. And so I, I think that's the level of performance that we have to give and that he wants from his team is the same all year. So there's nothing new being said in April that wasn't already said throughout the year. Um, and, and we hope we have them prepared to, to be on the biggest stage and, and whatnot. So um, usually if we play well and it, he's excited and, and I know right now we're, we're in a streak here. We've won 12 of 13 and um, played very well on the road the last few games. And, I think he's uh, he's he's really excited about his team. And um, one of the things that he shared with the group last night, he said, look, Saturday's going to be nuts. There's going to be a lot of things. And he, he was really great about, you know, saying, remember, it's not my moment. It's our moment. All the outside noise is noise. It's about our moment together as a team. And that's the one thing I think he does better than anybody is, is we're able to kind of block out the constant, you know, scrutiny and, and things, for, which for the most part is very good. I'm not complaining about it. We'd rather have it than not. Um, but to really just boil it down to, this is about our team this year. It's not about someone retiring. It's, a, it's about our team. We'll deal with the retirement stuff when, it, when it's time to retire. It's, he's not, we got plenty of games left this year, we hope. What's your favorite venue? Personally speaking, if you, you can't say Cameron, and you can't say going in to play Carolina at, at the Dean Dome and things like that. There's some, there's some great one. I mean, I, I've been to Allen Fieldhouse, not with Duke, but with uh, SMU when I was there. Uh, that's a great venue. Um, the Garden is always, especially when Duke's in it, is uh, it, there's a little buzz in the air and, and uh, good people watching. Uh, that's a good people watching venue. Um, you know, in our league, I really like Virginia's arena a lot. It's uh, uh, that's a that's a real cool place to play. Um, you know, I those are probably the three. You know, those are probably the three that I would say stand out uh, to me. You know, over the years, as far if it's not Cameron, Cameron's the best. So I mean, there's there's Cameron and there's everything else in my opinion. But um, but those are those are three that that I I enjoy going to. Somebody who wants to be in sports management and do what you do, what's the biggest advice that you could give somebody, whether they're coming out of high school or they're, you know, kind of undecided on what they want to do in the um, communication school at Penn State or wherever somebody's at? Yeah, well, it's interesting. So my, I have a 21 year old at Penn State who we're having these discussions right now. So I don't I don't know if I'm giving her the right advice, but but basically, you know, the. The more, the more you can get on a resume, the better, you know, so get practical experience as when I get, when I get resumes, I'm looking for what have you done? And there is a, as big as the sports industry is, 
there's still a who you know factor. And, and if I have a colleague at another school, for instance, that I trust and know, call me about someone who may be applying here, automatically that person's gonna get put on a different pile. And so the networking that people can do is, is absolutely critical. Like the more people you can just network with and, and be able to maybe pick up a phone for you or write a, write a reference letter for you. I mean, those things, they still matter. Uh, I know we're in a different time, you know, digital age, all that, um, you know, a little bit more movement, you know, a little less stability with people and their jobs. Uh, but end of day, um, all that stuff, those personal relationships, they still matter. And I can tell you, I would have never been employed at SMU without someone who knew someone at SMU that I worked for. And I would have never been employed at Duke without the same thing happening from SMU people who knew people at Duke. So I, I don't know that there's a template per se, but I do know that relationships at the end of the day, that it's still the most important thing in our business.